Hey everybody, good morning. It's uh, day 20, uh, Dr. Missy's Medical School for COVID-19. And I thought this morning a good way to um, help teach you something was to give you my experience of the symptoms I had as I started noticing the COVID-19 in myself. And I'll try to mention what Phil had too. Um, he's sleeping right now. The dog is quiet right now. But, you know, all things could change. So, 20 days ago, I noticed a dry cough. And because it's kind of springtime, I figured, well, maybe that's nothing. It was almost a dry cough that only came on occasionally and therefore it didn't really alarm me at all. And I didn't really make the connection. Um, I did notice almost immediately that I was very tired. The tiredness that, I'm, that I have had. Some people get a lot of muscle uh, pains and muscle aches, um, sharp muscle pains, things like that. I, I just call it a fatigue from the top of your head all the way to the tips of your toes. And the fatigue is, uh, it's real. It feels like, if you can imagine having been up for four or five days in a row and you finally get to sit in your lazy boy and in those couple of minutes before you fall asleep, that feeling where Every cell in your body is just really wiped out, almost tingly, almost numb, but just really tired. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that made me think, uh-oh, we definitely got it, is the first probably on night two, three, four. So early on, those first few nights, I had intense night sweats. Like, I am postmenopausal and I have had night sweats before, but this is very different. For me, the experience was completely saturating my side of the bed and the pillow. When I woke up, it felt literally wet and cold. Um, that happened three nights in a row, and then off and on it happened a few times, but not to that severity. But three nights in a row, it was just really severe. So the night sweats. <clears throat> um, back to the tiredness. The tiredness to me was a warning that I needed to try to keep my energy up with uh, wholesome foods. So we've tried to do a lot of lean meats like boneless, skinless chicken breasts and cans of tuna in water um, with fresh vegetables and fruit. It's a little harder with the whole quarantine and food being delivered and having to wash foods. We've probably been doing more canned foods than I'd like in the typical situation, but neither one of us had the energy to bring it in and wash everything in soap and water as best we could. And um, par Partly why I'm still concerned about stuff coming into the house is there's so little known about this that I'm uh, concerned that if we continue to get exposed to it, it might restart again and I don't know if that's true but I don't know that anybody knows that that's not true so we're still trying to isolate from the virus I hear my husband stirring so hopefully he's wearing clothes hey Phil I'm recording a video good morning are you doing okay are you sure Okay. Yeah. Um, I had 
a lot of nausea early on, even before I started coughing up phlegm back when I had the dry cough. Nausea was one of my bigger symptoms. Uh, has been from the start, still is today. I think the nausea is related today because I'm now taking different antibiotics and the mucinex and so I think the nausea may be uh, going on from that. I did have four episodes of vomiting during the past, uh, excuse me, 20 days. And they all were related to me trying to eat when I was really nauseated. And then I would <clears throat> take like three bites of food, four bites of food. And then all of a sudden I would feel like even though that's hardly any, I would feel like I had had a Thanksgiving meal in excess, and I would uh, just feel like super full, super bloated, and then all of a sudden the waves of nausea would come, my mouth would start watering, and I'd have to go to the bathroom, and I would throw up just that three bites, you know. And then it was interesting, because a few hours later, I would actually have legitimate hunger without nausea, and I'd be able to eat that meal that we had made here for dinner around nine o'clock at night instead. So I've been able to keep up with the nutrition, but not necessarily on your typical schedule, but based on the schedule of what my body thinks it can eat without too much nausea. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, in those first few days, I noticed diarrhea, um, I would say, five to nine times a day. It usually comes on kind of in a wave where just about the time you leave the bathroom and you're all washed up and everything, you're like, oh, I got to go again. You run back in. And so um, that was really bad with the nausea at the beginning. Then it kind of seemed to let up. And then as I started converting from a dry cough to a wet cough, uh, because I couldn't cough that uh, phlegm out, it was like sticky and way back in my throat. I'd have to swallow it, still do. Um, I just think it makes sense that you swallow stuff that's that nasty, it'll, can, it'll make you nauseated. And as your body processes it, as it goes through the intestines and into the colon, it makes sense to me that um, it would give you diarrhea because, you know, I don't think the human GI tract likes bacteria, uh, bat virus flying around. I did notice really early on, and I, I didn't actually notice it myself, but I had seen some kind of telecast on a professional basketball player, I, re I don't remember his name, that he had noticed, and one of the only symptoms he had, he didn't have fevers, he didn't have coughs, he didn't have chills. As I recall, the, one of the only symptoms he had was the inability to smell. And I definitely, when I heard that, I remember thinking, is that true? And I walked to the kitchen and I got out cinnamon, you know, a dried cinnamon, and I realized I couldn't smell. And then I, I tested it on some other things that, you know, like coffee grounds, couldn't smell them. And then I started noticing that it's true, I couldn't smell and I couldn't taste. Those have, for me, I've had a few days where they weren't so bad, but for the most part, I still can't smell and I still can't taste. Um, yeah, I can't smell or taste. Uh, so hopefully that'll come back as the thing goes away because that would be a bummer to have that as a chronic side effect. I did have a low grade temperature that started within a couple of days. When I mean low grade, our normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That's almost always the natural body temperature measured by mouth. <clears throat> um, so my low grade, uh, you know, I call it anything above 99.0. Uh, 
And then the highest I ever went was 100.7, I believe. And uh, usually for me, it's been between, really often I've measured it between 99.0 and 99.7. And that early on gave me an indicator that my lungs needed pulmonary toilet with postural drainage. And that was early on when my lungs started getting junky and wet with what's called a productive cough where you produce sputum. And I produced it in the back of my throat. But anyway, I could tell that it wasn't a dry cough anymore. Um, I've had an incredible amount of ringing in my ears. Um, other people get horrific headaches. I'm really grateful I haven't had a headache at all, but my ears are just constantly ringing. Um, I have had neck pain, and Phil has too. It's really strange. It's down on the lower neck, right where your neck attaches to your shoulders, and uh, it can't really make it go away. It's just there all the time. Part of me thinks it's from sitting in this dang chair watching TV too much. But honestly, even when I'm in bed, and even when I first wake up in the morning, I have neck pain in that area. Those are called the cervical vertebrae, and kind of in the lower ones, C5, 6, 7, down in the lower area, it's just constant uh, neck pain. Okay, um, chills. Um, although I had night sweats severely for a few days, I have had chills a couple of times, but nothing to rattle your teeth. I've heard people have that kind of chills. So the symptoms are really varied from person to person, um, among age groups. Uh, it, it's really quite a bizarre presentation of an illness. And that's why I think it's kind of hard to diagnose because everybody's a little different with the way they respond to it. So I've had chills a couple of times where I noticed and I'd put a sweater on even though it was 73 degrees in the house. Um, <clears throat> we have noticed that we kind of are adjusting the temperature in the house. Sometimes we put it on heat. Sometimes we put it on air conditioner. Sometimes we put it on heat back and forth day and night. It's just like a, a symphony <laughs> of uh, adjusting uh, the temperature in the house because our body temperature is fluctuating and even though we may have those swings where we feel hot or cold it doesn't always respond uh, relate to having a fever uh, a lot of times we find that our temperature is normal but we're just experiencing these sensations of being overly hot or fairly cold and drafty um, so the dry cough went to a wet cough for me at about three days that's when I started thinking and being concerned that um, I might need to start doing uh, chest percussions, the uh, lung drumming exercises with the cupped hand, and Phil started then. We were pretty vigilant at first, and when I'd feel better, we'd back off. That was actually a mistake. We should have just kept doing it. And if you're gonna wean, wean slowly. So if you've done four sessions today, tomorrow do at least three whether you want to or not because I mean, it's exhausting you just kind of get tired of always doing it and if you have a good day where you feel good you want to just not deal with it so I would recommend that you keep dealing with it I have had a sore throat you can hear my throat is sort of laryngitis when I swallow it's a bit sore honestly I think it's from having coughed probably thousands of coughs a day for 20 days. That's a, a fair amount of trauma to my vocal cords. Um, I wouldn't consider singing in a song for you guys right now. I just think I might actually hurt my vocal cords. Um, dizziness. I've had a little bit of dizziness, and I would recommend for those of you who've had dizziness before in your lives that be a little careful Um when you get from when you go from a laying down position where your head is flat to a sitting position 
just just stay there for five or ten seconds and make sure you're not too dizzy. And then stand and wait for about five or ten seconds. Make sure you're not too dizzy. Be near something that you could grab onto. And then start walking. But I, Phil has particularly noticed this. It's been one of his most uncomfortable symptoms is I've seen him get out of a chair or off of the bed and he'll take three steps and uh, just very suddenly he has to find a place to sit down and even sometimes has to fight, get back in bed real fast because he's that dizzy. Um, I haven't had that um, as bad. Like I said, my symptoms in my head are just the major ringing in the ears. Um, so now I'm on day 20. I hope that helped you guys. Those are all the symptoms that I've had. Phil is more achy head to toe. I'm just kind of numb and tired head to toe. He's, his muscles are really sore. Um, he's starting to develop a productive cough, but it's not real wet. Um, I've done that, those chest percussion exercises on him uh, a handful of times in the 20 days. Um, he's done it three or four times a day for me most days. Yesterday we did it twice. Um, and I, I think that's all I can tell you. You guys have a good day. I, I hear your worry. I see your worry in your text. I just want to tell you that, um, you know, it is what it is. I just want you to know. I want you to know how to take care of yourself. I do think we're going to be okay. And I love you guys. Okay, bye.